Last year, I developed this product, the 6-in-1 Universal Trim Router Jig, which turns your router into the ultimate handheld tool with my buddy, Jonathan Katz-Moses. This year, Jonathan has created this flat pack router table that uses my 6-in-1 jig as a base plate, turning it into the ultimate benchtop tool. Best part, you can go from handheld to benchtop and vice versa in just about 15 seconds. Pretty cool. This is one of those products where assembling it is a fun project as well. So let's build this thing. I'm not going to go into full detail on assembling it because when you purchase the router table, a really detailed instructional video that Jonathan made gets sent to you. So I'm going to follow that video and then we'll test it out. I wanna see how long this actually takes to assemble. But when I'm filming, I have to move my camera from location to location in order to get a good shot. And that adds a lot of time. So it's not really realistic for what it would be like if somebody were to assemble this themselves. So I'm gonna do something a little different on this video. I have one camera, two cameras, and three cameras set up so that I don't have to move my camera at all. And I could just build this like anybody would when they're ordering it. So I watched Jonathan's video and I wrote down the steps that I'll need to do and I got everything ready that I need, I think, I hope, and let's begin. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to sort through any hardware that comes with all my products and set that off to the side. Step one, glue the bottom stretchers. All right, so I'm gonna move everything out of the way here. So this bottom stretcher that holds the router bits, that gets glued up. I'll use a mixture of regular wood glue and a little bit of CA glue so that it like clamps it and it holds it right away and then I, I don't have to wait around. Ooh, I wasn't totally prepared. I always forget the glue brush. Now I'll put CA glue on, and this is going to act as a clamp so I could keep working and I don't have to worry about waiting for glue to dry. Just hold that for like 10 to 15 seconds. Make sure those edges are flush. All right, what's next? Sides and back, okay. It's very clear which is the inside face and the outside face because they're very smooth chamfers around. That's what goes on the outside. Then there's also all these holes are chamfered. So it's really nice. You could, uh, this is bottom like that. Like even though the parts aren't labeled, you're able to tell which is the inside and the outside really easily. Okay, I am going to clamps. Now Jonathan uses some corner clamps in his video, but um, I didn't prepare and I didn't make those. So I'm just going to use a regular clamp. I'll put a little bit of glue on here. All right. Now try to get this as square as I can. All right. So I'll loosely clamp that. Tap it so that it's flush. The holes are uh, drilled and chamfered so that a screw, uh, it can get countersunk in there, but the, the mating piece, the, the hole is not drilled for that yet. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to uh, drill a hole there so that uh, the screw doesn't split into the mating pieces. And I think it's gonna be easier to drill down straight. And I'm also using my bench as a reference for square because I know that the edge of my bench is square. So I don't have to use corner clamps. Just tighten that up. Um, where did my mallet go? Oh, <laughs> okay. Just a little, a little nudge this way. Flush, flush, we're all flush. I'll get another clamp. Okay, Ooh, I need to clamp this down. And that's why it's really always handy to have clamps just like around your workbench and your work area. 
Okay, now I'll drill in these eighth inch, use an eighth inch drill bit over here. And it does not come with screws. You have to supply your own screws I'm using inch and a half screws here. That's what Jonathan suggests. And then just drive them home. And you just want to make sure that you drive them in so that they are underneath the surface, that they're not protruding. Okay. Uh, see, I actually labeled B on these before I started knowing that this was the bottom. Sometimes, sometimes I plan ahead. All right, okay. Put on some glue. Get it nice and flush. Clamp it all down. Yeah, I'll do this. Drill. I'm probably gonna need those again. All right, what's next? The top stretcher goes in place now. That's the piece that has no holes. Okay, so first I'll get a clamp on. Get a little glue on there on both ends and just make sure it's flush before drilling the holes and then locking it down with screws, just like before. Now I'm just making sure it's flush by feel with my fingers, but you can use a straight edge if you want to. I like to live on the edge. Now the other side. Next step, what do I got? Now the lower stretcher, that was the one that was glued up here where it's gonna hold the router bits. Same thing happens. So because I used the CA glue, I was, I'm able to do this right now and I don't have to wait for any glue to dry, which is pretty awesome. Okay, get some glue on there. Make sure everyone's still recording. You're all good? All right. Get that into place. You know the drill at this point. Do I say that every time after I do a step? Am I saying that every time? All right, okay, let's go. Huh, sand. All right, now, well, the whole base is done. That was pretty simple. I'm curious how long that took. So, so far it was about 20 minutes just to do the base and I'm talking to you guys and also taking a few water breaks. Now I just need to sand everything flush. Next up is to assemble the fence. Again, it's easy to tell which is the front and the back because of the chamfered holes. These pieces go on like that, I believe. Move this out of the way for a second. All right, I'll temporarily put these in place on the back with CA glue. Wood glue is not gonna do anything here because of the slick surface of the melamine. Really don't wanna get to squeeze out, so I did as little, little as possible just on the top area. Ooh, is this in or out? Yeah, okay. Oh man, good job, Jonathan. Like there's no question of whether 
this piece goes on the right or left because of the curves that are put on the pieces. Like, you know that it's gonna be that way and not the other way. Just really smart design. But remember, it's just temporary. I'm gonna lock it down with screws just like I did on all the other pieces. But I'm gonna be really careful when I'm drilling down because the CA glue is not super strong on the melamine. It's really, like really temporary. You know, I'll add a little clamp. and repeat. Now while the piece is clamped up here, I might as well just get this on here. A little bit, a little spray. Now, same thing, Jonathan has round it over one corner and one corner is square so you know which piece is the right piece and which piece is the left piece. These go on like that and where's the tin of bolts and knobs. Bolt goes in there and then you lock it down on the back with a knob. And each one of these fences has two bolts. That's not a knob. <laughs> That's a knob. For now, I'll just loosely put those in place. And the fence is complete. On to the next step, which is the top. There are these leveling inserts that are included, and these are going to go into the bottom, in through the bottom. Flip it over. And there's threaded holes in there already, so this is just super easy. I'm just quickly putting them in now and then I'll do all the adjustments after. Now the next step is to lock the top down to the base. And just by feel, I'm gonna see where it all goes. It overhangs slightly on the edges and it's offset hanging a little bit extra on the front here. And same process as before. Now you definitely want to make sure that these screws are below the level surface here because you don't want your material to run into those screws as you are routing. Now some of these screws are in the tracks where the T, well, in the slots where the T-tracks are going to go. But you want to screw that down before you insert the T-track, which just makes sense. Again, the design on this, one second, I gotta take a moment to talk about this. There's a spot for the screw here that goes next to where these screws are and they're not running into each other. So that was thought about, that was planned out, that was, Good job, Jonathan. All right, next job. Now I put the T-track on. So this T-track slips right in there. This is a little bit below the surface of the top, which is great, which means your material won't ever bump into it. I have a VIX bit that drills in the center of these holes. And these screws for the T-track came with everything. So you don't need to get screws for these. Jonathan suggests screwing these in by hand, but sometimes I don't follow the rules. Okay. We're done. So how long did that take of actual building? About a half hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Where is my base plate that, oh, here. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, here's the magic. This is the coolest part. And what's so unique and so amazing about this router table. Plop, and then you just put the knobs on. 
but I'm not going to put the knobs on just yet. I want to set the, uh, um, the leveling feet first, and then I'm going to put on the knobs. Now, Jonathan has like a whole tutorial on how to do this on the video that gets sent to you when you purchase the router table. Seems okay, now I'll put on the knobs. I'm not gonna crank down super hard on these. I'm gonna like get it so that it's snug, and then I'm just gonna like slightly more. All right, so it's snug, and now just like boop. All right, time to put on the fence. All this hardware comes with the router table. Just put those bolts in the T-track, put the fence on, and lock it with these knobs. And it's done. <laughs> That's it. How long did that take me? It was under an hour and I'm like talking as I'm doing it. And this was my first time building this, just so you know, I did not assemble any of these before. Jonathan did send me uh, one that was already built, but this was my first time assembling this. Under an hour, not bad at all. It looks great. I maybe would add some finish to the base just to um, make it look nice. You could paint it, so you could put your logo on it. All right, let's test this out. What's really cool about this design is that it's really easy to take the router out, change bits, and then put the router back in. My workbench is a little bit too tall, so it's a little bit uncomfortable for me to route at this height, like I'm right up into the bit. I am going to be building a workbench coming up very soon and I'm making that a lot lower, but for now, I'm gonna set this up on some saw horses so you can see that you don't even need a workbench to use this. One of the most common uses for a setup like this is to flush trim with templates. And you can see this is a fairly big piece and it's fully supported on the table here. So all I have to do, adjust the height of the bit, which is easy to do by reaching through the bottom of the router table. Now you don't need the fence for this operation because the bearing on the bit is going to ride along the template. But I don't know if Jonathan designed it this way. I'm gonna set this up close to where the bit is. My Festool hose fits really snugly <laughs> in that opening there. All right, let's see how that works. And then I just really needed to do all the other corners because this was just so satisfying to see the dust being sucked into that dust port. When I first started this video, I thought that I was just going to do a bunch of test cuts and sample cuts, but now that all these corners are nicely rounded, I kind of want to make this into a project. So I'm going to attempt to make a juice groove on this router table. So first I'll just have to swap out the bit. Oh, that's really nice <laughs> being able to pull that through the saw horses. All right, so I'm going to swap out to a core box bit, and this is going to make a juice groove, hopefully, on this new project here. When using a core box bit, it's a closed cut, kind of like a dado or a groove. So the dust is not going to go by the fence. So the way that I had the dust collection set up before is not going to work at all. All the dust is going to go in the hole in the center of the base plate. So I have to alter my dust collection plans, and I happen to have one of these attachments that goes on my router base just like that, and the dust port gets hooked up right to there. So I'm going to test out to see if this works. Now, I probably could have put this on while it was already assembled into the table, but I realized that I had my router in this way, and the port just doesn't make sense going out that way. It makes more sense going this way, so that's just something to note. Make sure when you're assembling your router, think about all the attachments and buttons and uh, all the adjustments that are on your own router. You can rotate it either direction to work for your specific router. First, I set the bit height lower than I really want it to be so that I could do this in multiple passes. And then I also set the fence opening so that it's equal on both sides. Like I flushed it up to the opening that's in the back 
of the fence. And then I moved the fence away from the bit, a distance that I thought would be good for the juice groove. There was no measuring here. Probably if this was a real project, I would measure something. So this just makes sense to me that you would plunge your piece down on the straights. It's easy. And then on the corners, you just have to go slowly around the corners. Since there's always two points of contact because of the opening, this makes sense that it should work. But you had to go, or I had to go, really, really slowly. And I didn't have that kind of patience. So this didn't really turn out so great. There are definitely better ways to make juice grooves, but this definitely does work. So there's a juice groove. This method totally works. While not perfect, I would need to clean that up quite a bit. But what I want to take note here is that there is zero dust in this area on the floor around me. This is just so amazing how this dust collection works on this benchtop portable router table. Now, just for fun, I'll do a more common type of cut, a groove. So this is where the fence comes into play. You just run your workpiece along the fence and the grooves are perfect every single time. If you want to make a groove that's wider than the bit that you have, all you need to do is push the fence away from the bit and make another cut. Again, notice here, after these two cuts, well, four cuts, there is no dust on the floor around me. This setup here is just so amazing. You can use this on sawhorses like I just showed, or you can use it on your bench top in your shop. So it's great for on the go in your shop. Uh, I know Jonathan is doing a video also. I'm not sure when his is going to be posted. I think he posted it already. I will put a link to his video where it shows how tough this router table actually is. And also something I forgot to mention, these holes on the bottom here are to store your favorite bits. I made a claim earlier that this goes from handheld to benchtop in about 15 seconds, but I said that without trying it first. So I'm going to try it out now to see how long it actually takes to swap it. On your marks, get set. Fifteen seconds. Ah, twenty-four. Stop. Stop. Okay. All right. Twenty-four seconds. So it takes about ten seconds longer than I said in the beginning of the video, but it's under thirty seconds, under half a minute. That is kind of crazy. All right. Now I'm going to do it the other way. See how long it takes to go from handheld to benchtop. All right. Let's clear this out. Reset. Why is my left hand so weak? Done. All right. Same. Again, 26 seconds, under a minute. So amazing. I can definitely see myself switching back and forth because it's so easy to swap back and forth. So I think this is really cool, but I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this. I've never seen something where it could go from handheld to bench top as quickly as this does. This is also super beefy, super sturdy. So I really want to know your thoughts on this. We put a lot of time and effort and thoughts into designing these to make them like the best tools that they could possibly be. So I really want to hear what you guys have to say about them. And if you have the six in one jig, you do not need to get anything extra because this benchtop router table uses the six in one jig base as the base plate. So all you need is this um, benchtop router table that you'll assemble, it was fun to assemble, and that's it. If you don't have the six in one jig, I believe that Jonathan is running a special on his website. Let me check to verify before I continue. Yep, okay, so right now he's offering a special where you can get the bundle you could get the router table and the six in one jig for a little bit of a discount. And I am not sure how long he's going to be running that special for because it's all sold on his website that I'm going to link down below. So I don't have any control over his website. So 
definitely check it out and let me know what you guys think. I am excited to figure out how I can use the accessories from my six in one jig on this bench top router table. I think that there's a lot of possibilities here. I think it's going to be really cool and also really cool. We have a lot of new ideas and products coming your way. So stay tuned, some more videos and more projects. I hope you guys like this one and I'll see you on the next one.